All right. Okay, they're coming in. You look like you're drinking wine already, Matt. No, it does. I think it actually is a wine glass. Oh, you can see it when I put it there. But it's... Um, yeah. Who says I'm not? I know, you're on holiday, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On holiday, but come to webinars. Why not? <laughs> much appreciated. Nick's yeah. off all this week and he's come in especially for this, so that's good. I'm just hoping that the, the kids don't steal all the bandwidth on the on our internet connection. <laughs> if I lose, if we lose me, it's because the power's gone out. We've just had a massive storm system go through here, and there's flooding. I can't actually get out of where the little little town that I live in at the moment. So, if I go down, I'm done. I'm underwater. We got more people online than the first one. They must have they must have heard how good it was. They did. <laughs> yeah. And, and and for everyone who has uh, joined us this evening, we'll just uh, we, we have over a hundred people registered uh, for the webinar tonight, and we'll wait uh, and give people a few more minutes to to join, and, and then we'll get started. Uh, we'll tell you this information again but this is being recorded it will be up on uh the cyc race to mackinac channel youtube channel uh in, in a day or two and uh the first webinar is already up on the youtube channel we're also going to post it to the chicago yacht club website with a public facing link for everybody so if you miss something uh there will be plenty of opportunity to review it uh and also uh karen nick and their support team are very good about answering questions that are emailed to them uh so bear with us a few minutes and uh and uh we'll get going So there's a question that said the link to the first webinar that was emailed actually linked to the MOB discussion. That is that correct or is the link wrong? Uh, the answer is the link is wrong. And thank you for pointing that out. Uh, after this webinar, uh, I will get with our comms department and ask them to correct that. So thank you for asking that. Well, I, I think, especially because it's recorded, uh, we should uh, start this without further ado. Uh, I, we have with us tonight, session two of three of our Predict Win webinars, uh, Nick Olson and uh, 
Karen McMaster. Uh, there's a lot of people on that weren't on last time. So Karen and Nick, if you could uh, give uh, the participants a little background of yourself uh, and uh, I, who's responding to the Q&A. If you have questions, they go in the Q&A, uh, not the chat, and they will be responded to. So thank you. Thanks, Ray. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so uh, Kieran and I are actually both going to do uh, some presenting. Um, so we'll both have a go at the Q&A. Um, Kieran will do a much better job at the Q&A than me. Uh, but uh, so what we're going to do is Kieran is going to run over uh, Iridium Go comps. And we're not going to go super in depth with that, but um, definitely cover off some of the basics and some of the stuff that you really need to get going. Um, we do have a lot of information about that online and it's, it's um, definitely something that you should reach out to our support team with if you do have further questions. Um, so yeah, um, my name is Nick Olson and I'm, the, I'm actually the marketing manager at Predict Wind and I'm a sailor, I've sailed since I was six and done a lot of dinghy sailing and a um, uh, reasonable amount of keelboat sailing. Uh, Kieran, uh, on the other hand, who is uh, the head of our support team, hence the reason she'll be much better than me on the Q&A, uh, she's a she's a she's a bit of a sailing legend, and um, she's done a couple of Volvos and many other um, offshore races, and uh, yeah, she's very knowledgeable and um, and a good sort too. So yeah, I've, I've <laughs> uh, I didn't hear you then, by the way, Kieran. So just check you're not muted. Um, anyway, I'll just hand over to Kieran. She's going to talk about the go, and then I'm going to sort of run through some stuff to think about for our webinar next week um, just sort of cover off the software again and some things that you might want to start doing um, in preparation for next week so I'll hand over to you Karen. Oh, thanks can you hear me? Yep. Yep, cool. All right. Um, so yeah, thanks. My name's Kieran. I head the support team for Product Wind. On support there is a total of 14 of us now. Um, we're all sailors, we only employ sailors for the support team because we know how important it is to understand what you guys are going through out there. Um, so if you come into support, you'll get one of our really experienced team. Between us, we've got Olympic sailors, a couple more around the world, um, lots of um, offshore cruising people. So yeah, anyway, so the plan is just to talk briefly about the Iridium Go, because I think the majority of you will have those on the boat. If you don't have an Iridium Go, you can use our offshore app weather system and get your forecast data through cellular connection, at home on an internet connection. You can get it through email if you've got some other sort of system on the boat. Um, so there's lots of ways you can get our system. But I'm going to talk about the Iridium Go for the next 10 minutes and I can answer any questions as well. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen because I'll show you the first part of it, um, what we actually sell. So we sell and support the Iridium Go system. It's a handheld device um, and you can connect it up to an external antenna. The reason that you do that is so that your Iridium Go is safe down inside your boat and the external antenna grabs the signal, um, the satellite signal and does all the hard work outside. Um, we sell this online and if you haven't got one already, you, there is still time to get it. We are a New Zealand based company but we have a distribution warehouse in Nevada, so we can get you a system within three, three to five days. If you have a system that you've borrowed off somebody else, you can also use that with our Predict One system. They're not locked to one particular company, um, but we'd recommend that you get our SIM cards. The SIM cards look like this a little chip, and it actually goes in the unit. You'd be surprised how many times people ask, does this go in your cell phone? It doesn't go in your cell phone, it goes in the Iridium Go unit. And then you need to activate that SIM card to get it to work. So um, what you can do is when you activate the SIM card, you can choose one of three plans. You can have the basic plan, the plus plan or the unlimited. Now the unlimited plan is the one that we recommend everybody goes on. And that um, gives you 150 minutes of voice calls per month, per calendar month, so from the 1st to the 30th of the month. It's got unlimited data. And the reason that that's important is so that you can get all of our weather information through the Iridium Go while you're at sea. 
Um, unlimited data, just to set your expectations, it's not data like you've got at home. It's actually really, really slow. So um, imagine the old dial-up days, you know, 15, 20 years ago, um, and then make it even slower again. That's what you're dealing with. So we've optimized our programs to work with that slow data speed. Uh, but um, don't you can't Google search anything, you can't um, access Facebook, you can't do any internet banking, you can't access websites. So if you need a system like that, this isn't the one for you. You need to buy something that um, will cost you upwards of five or ten thousand dollars to set up and a couple of thousand dollars a month. But you can get everything you need for the race and for your cruising needs at sea with what we offer here with the Iridium Go. So the Iridium Go self itself is just this little box here. We recommend that you get it with the external antenna kit. So that's everything that you need to set it up on the boat. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing now because we probably don't need to go into any more of that. Um, okay, so yeah, this is the SIM card and they come to you, um, you just pop it out and you activate it. Now, our airtime plans are really important to get your head around. They're a little bit confusing, so I'm going to try and explain it to you in terms of for the race. So if you have an Iridium Go now, you want to activate it within the next few days. We pro rata the first month. So if you're activating it halfway through July, you're only going to pay half of that airtime plan. So the unlimited airtime plan is $140 a month. Um, so you'd only play half of that for the rest of July. And then on the 1st of August, it will roll over and you'll pay upfront for a whole nother month. So you're going to end up paying for half of July and all of August, and then you can deactivate it at any time. You can't use it just for five days or seven days. That's not how the Iridium billing system works. And that's not our rules. That's what Iridium stipulates to us. And that's what we have to on charge you. So just to set that expectation now, you will pay for, if you activate it in the next few days, please activate it sooner than later. Don't be doing it as you're motoring out of the marina to start the race. There's a bit of um, setup involved. This is not a plug and play device. You need to practice with it beforehand. We get a lot of customers that are very unhappy because they can't make it work, but they've spent no time on it. There's little tips and tricks that you need to understand especially because you actually use your cell phone, like my mobile here, to connect to the Iridium Go. You connect it through Wi-Fi to the Iridium Go base station, and then this becomes your handset for making phone calls, sending text messages. You can send and receive emails, and you can connect your computer up to it so that you can download weather information through the offshore app. But all of that takes practice. And there's some, like I said, there's some tips. You need to put your phone into airplane mode. There's lots of different little things that might stop a connection. If you don't practice with it early, you're going to get frustrated with it. So we're here to help. But um, yeah, like I said, it's really important that it, you start activating it now. The race, I think, is 10 days away. So I would be expecting that everyone should activate it in the next few days. And if you haven't got it, still time to get it. Um, SOS. The Iridium Go, once it's activated, you can set up an SOS feature within it, and there's a little button on the side of it that you push, and if you push that button, you will send an SMS message to whoever you've set up to receive it. So if you don't set up SOS at all on the Iridium Go, it's not going to work. So part of the setup process is that you have to choose who you want to use for your emergency contact, You've got two options with the Iridium Go. You can choose Geos, which is a company that is affiliated with Iridium. They provide a free service. And if you register with Geos and you set your Iridium Go up to use Geos, if you push the button, Geos is going to coordinate the emergency response. You don't have to use Geos. You could just put in a family or friend. And when you push the SOS button, they will get that emergency message they will be the ones that are expected to do something with that. I mean, of course, you're going to use your EPIRB if you're getting off the boat or you've got a real problem, and the Iridium Go should be a backup emergency device, but you need to pre-program it again beforehand. So that's another reason why um, set it all up early. Now, I'm just going to quickly share my 
screen again. The Iridium Go is set up to use apps that Iridium pre-approve. So you can't use all the apps on your phone. You have to use, if you want to send SMS message and make phone calls, you have to use this app called the Iridium Go app. It will only work on your phone, on your um, tablet, like an iPad, an Android device, or an iPhone or an Android phone. And with this app, you can make phone calls and send text messages. You have to use a plus one number, even if you're in America, because you have to imagine your Iridium goes like its own little island in the middle of nowhere. And so you, it doesn't know, you have to use the country code. Um, within the Iridium Go app, you can also set up um, other things, but really keep it simple. Don't go into the back end of the app and start changing settings. They come with all the default settings in there. The more you go in there and play with it, the worse it's going to get for you. And then you'll be coming into support and we'll be helping you fix it. Um, you can get Iridium email, but for the race, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's, there's a bit of setup and you should be able to, for the length of the race, send SMS messages, make voice calls and use our offshore app to get the weather. But if you wanted to for longer term cruising, you can set up Iridium mail. Um, and like I said, this whole web part, Iridium Mail and Web, the web is, is non-existent anymore. They've dis deactivated that side of it. So you can't go on the web with the Iridium Go. Um, we've designed our offshore app to work with the Iridium Go specifically. And so you can download all the weather that you need through the Iridium Go for the race. And Nick's going to go into how you do that later. But it goes into grid file. You get grid files and routing. And this can work on your Mac computer, your Windows PC, on your iPhone, iPad, Android device. So we've set it up so that you can get weather on any device. Um, what else should I talk about, Nick? Um, got the three different plans. You can get the different accessories here. Um, you can get extra batteries, which I'd recommend, especially if you're gonna put it in a grab bag, um, you can put that in the grab bag for an emergency situation. The external antenna comes with all the bits that you need. This is the white dome antenna that you mount outside with the rail mounting kit. It's got 12 meters of antenna cable and then um, a mounting bracket so that you can actually put this a little Iridium Go downstairs, like I said, safely. Comes with all the different charging cables. And um, yeah, and if there's any questions, we've got some setup videos and we've got our support team who will help you with any questions. We've set up thousands of these units, so we know what the, the important things are. But you have to activate it first, download the apps, and start practicing with it. Nick, anything else I missed? Uh, well, there's no questions uh, on that so <laughs> far. So <laughs> that's maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, no, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, if there are questions, Kieran. Um, do you want me to take over, Kieran? And um, yeah, you uh, take over, Kieran. and I'll jump on the chat. And if there's anything people want to ask that I didn't cover, just uh, let us know. But I can't and en can't encourage you enough to start using it now and really practice with it before you head offshore. Cool. cool. Thanks, Kieran. No it's got to be better than listening to me for forty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah as Karen said uh, yeah, the, the sooner you get that stuff set up uh the more you use it uh the more you enjoy it um I, i've um used it myself uh sailing two-handed and i loved it it was just you know I, I had it set up you know so i could just press three buttons and um, download everything onto my ipad and away i went and um and I'll talk about this a few times. And, and to be fair, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say today, I probably said last week, and I'll probably say it again next week. But we're just going to really going to, uh, the more we can hammer home um, how to use these fundamental features and, and make them work for your boat and for you, the, the better. Um, and so, yeah, just yeah, getting all these things right is, is, is going to make your lives uh, easier and you can get more from it. Um, you know, the weather routing in particular, it's so powerful. It's got so much information in there that you can get over that 
Iridium Go connection. And um, it's, yeah, the, the more you use that and begin to understand what you're looking at in there, uh, the, the, the better you're going to, uh, the more you're going to get from it. So I, uh, we just had some questions in the chat about uh, the YB tracking. So, I mean, yes, we have an integration with YB tracking, um, but we're not the YB tracker app or the, you know, the, the tracker that's on the, uh, on the club website or the event website. Um, so, you know, do, you know, do, do use those apps where you can. Uh, the, the beauty of what we do is that you can get those uh, tracking updates over your Iridium Go connection or other satellite connection. Uh, which is really cool. So I'll jump into a screen share and I will show you how we do that. So I am in the PredictWind um, forecast website, forecast.predictwind.com. I'm logged into my account and uh, obviously we have all our forecast tools, uh, you know, parameters down here uh, that we can look at. And, and do our pre, you know, help us with our pre-race analysis, look at different models, uh, compare the observations and all that stuff. But what, what I'll show you now is uh, how we set up our YB tracking so that then it will display in your offshore app. So probably should have, for all the new people, I will, um, I'll actually do it. just because this question got asked uh, at the end of the webinar last week. So we have two different apps, and this is really uh, important to know uh, that we have the Predict Wind app and website. So it's just in the website there, and we have the Predict Wind offshore app. So as soon as you go out of cell phone range, you want to be using the offshore app. Uh, what I'm gonna cover off in, in the next half an hour and uh, and next week is really based around the offshore app. We will do some stuff in the Predict Wind website, but that'll just be so that we can uh, support what's in the offshore app. The offshore app, even if you don't have a SAT connection, uh, but you have your Predict Wind subscription, you'll, you'll want to use the, the offshore app as much as you can because it saves all your data offline. So yeah, the two two different uh, pieces of software there. I'll flip back to the screen that I was. So I am in the website, the Predict Wind Forecast website. I'm not in the offshore app. And I've come down here on this main menu and uh, you see here I have tools and I have my weather routing and departure planning, GPS tracking. I'm gonna come down here to where it says YB events. And I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see here, I've got some uh, data from the um, the Bermuda shorthanded race that was the I think that a shorthanded return race after the Newport Bermuda and um, so you'll see all the all the tracks there um, of uh, you know from that race so it gives you some idea of, of what you're going to see um, probably uh, also you can see why the question before in the chat about um, splitting it down to divisions would be would be nice. I've already sent a message to our development manager about that. So um, so we come in here and we select our race and we do have, um, my Zoom control's in the way. Come in here, we select the race and you will see that we do have the main tracking link is already in there. Uh, YB events have, have sent that through to us. So that's already set up. You will see every boat in the fleet. So uh, be aware of that. And um, yeah, the, 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 it can get quite busy. Um, you can add the race to your weather routing and departure planning pages. Um, would I do that? Personally, probably not. Um, I, I'd like to sort of keep my uh, weather routing page clear. Really nice if you want, if you if it's, if it, if you want to sit there and um, route some of your competitors and, and get some ideas of, of, of where they might be going and how you can uh, strategically uh, position yourself in regards to that. So yeah, but really, the, if, if we can add all the uh, divisions, I'll, um, I'll let Ray know. And, um, and so you could actually just have your division um, showing on your page, which could be nice. 
I'll just leave that as a Bermuda shorthand at the moment so that then we can see the information in the, um, in the offshore app where we go in there. Um, I don't think we'll talk too much about what else we would do here. I think probably before we do, obviously at the moment we want to be, um, we, what I would be doing uh, at this stage is every day I would be running uh, the route um, for the race. Uh, I would be, you know, I'd be running it twice a day and just looking at how it how it differs each each model run, seeing what the different conditions are like, and then you know look like it for the route. And obviously, as you get down uh, or up the lake, the um, you know there's often some pretty big changes, and just get a better feel for for how the uh, the tools are working for you, and 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 looking at your polars. So I'll go back to the tools, and we'll go to the weather routing because I said that magic word, uh, which is polars. If you don't know what polars are, um, definitely take a crash course. The polars are how fast the weather routing thinks your boat's going to go in any given conditions. Um, I'm going to cover this. I think I mentioned this last week. I'm going to cover it today, and I'm going to cover it next week. Polars are so important. And so this is, this is definitely something you should be looking at now. Even if you're not out on the water, um, you know, comparing the data to what to what you're getting. Um, I know in any boats that I've sailed on, uh, even a small amount, I have a really, really good idea of what speeds they do um, at certain times. And if you don't, maybe uh, go sailing. Uh, if you're going sailing this week in the evenings um, and this weekend, take some notes, take a notepad and start writing down some of these key numbers. So I'm here and I'm in the weather routing and I click on routing preferences and I am, uh, I'm actually in an advanced polar. So this has opened up the page where we can set our polars. Um, just so you know, this where it says optimized routing for fastest time and for comfort. Uh, unless you're going cruising, you don't want to be routing for comfort. <laughs> so just, um, just one to remember there. So we, we've got these two settings here. We've got our routing settings. We've got boat polar and wave polar. I'll talk about the wave polar in a little second, in a minute. Um, down here, we've, we have our boat types. And so you can see here, I'm on an advanced polar. Um, and if we come back here, I click on predefined. And it's actually a, a polar for a J120. Um, and I can select from this list, I can select, you know, a bunch of boats. There's lots of them in here. Um, so yeah, if, you're, if your boat's in there, it's a really good place to start. Um, if it's not, um, ch choose a boat that uh, is like your boat. So a boat that I do quite a bit of sailing on, it's a, a, a custom race boat. And so we don't have a polar for it, but I know that it's, it's pretty similar to a FAR 40 in performance, uh, has some slightly different uh, performance aspects, but, but it was a really good place for me to start. So with that boat, I selected the far forty, far far forty, and then I adjusted the uh, adjusted the polar. So anyway, um, we'll leave it. We'll leave it on the J one hundred and twenty because I um, had a little look at these polars before, and I quite liked them. So I've got I've got I've selected that. It's a predefined boat, boat, boat polar. I could leave that as is if I wanted to. If I wanted to have a, you know a bit of a look at how how that looks at all the you know the different wind speeds and the different wind angles i can open up this this polar chart which you some people might be much more familiar with looking at polars this way and i can see how it looks uh, an interesting thing in here and is to have a look you'll see um you know there's the areas where your boat you probably know your boat performs well um then you can you should see, sort of see the bumps in here you know obviously this sort of 135 true wind angle area um, on your J120 is is probably pretty good. Um, I think I've said I think I said a J120 or maybe it was a 110. Oh, I'm not sure in Bermuda one time and it was a cool boat. But yeah, did we had an asymmetric spinnaker on it and you know definitely didn't like uh, running too deep and um, so yeah, check the check out your polar um, graph and uh, see how you. 
if it fits. So, but what I'm going to do here, so we've got, we're on predefine and I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on advanced. Oh, hang on. I'm going to go back because I should have clicked on this button here, copy to advanced polar. So I've done that. It's gone across. And then I'm going to click on advanced. <clears throat> so in here, I can adjust these angles. So what we, I'll just run across this top line to explain what's going on. True wind speed, six knots, has this, these two columns of zero just to um, basically cut the polar off. And then this is, these are my target upwind angles. Uh, so true wind angle is what we use, is what we use. Um, and then the boat speed. So six knots of wind speed. I mean, that looks, that's pretty optimistic, right? Uh, 46 degrees true wind angle and a boat speed of five knots. I don't know. I mean, you know, so if we thought that was that was too fast, we could change it. To the weight speed would be four knots. You know, it, I don't know whether this boat's actually going to do these sorts of speeds in, um, you know, is it going to start going faster than the wind at 75? Maybe. I don't sail one, so I'm not that familiar with it. But um, you can come in here and you can adjust all these numbers and then run your routing. Uh, the other way to, to, to look at this is to run your routing and look at the outputs. And we'll talk about that. Just close the intercom. No one needs to see that. Uh, so yeah, we can work that, our way through all of the, the wind speeds. Getting this right is uh, really, really important. I'm not sure how I just flicked myself out of that screen. I'll come back to it. Uh, yeah, getting this right is is really, really important. It's it really makes the uh, the tool something you can trust and, and use with, with confidence. Uh, you see here, we have these polar speed adjustments. We can adjust these in the offshore app and we will look at that. We can also set up tack and jibe penalties. Uh, basically, if you think that the router has you tacking a lot um, or jibing more than you'd like, you can actually uh, increase these uh, penalties. Uh, we have the depth avoidance, so it's using a contour, uh, a depth contour from CMAPS um, to avoid. So rather than the land, uh, using land avoidance, it will actually use the depth contour. So about, you know, five metres is you know, between two and five metres. Um, obviously, this is a weather tool, not a, 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 not a navigation tool. So you always want to, you know, make sure that you're checking your navigation. Um, we won't talk about tidal and ocean currents and yeah, advanced routing adjustments. You can use these, you can scale the routing. So you can scale the wind speed for the routing. Um, it's not gonna scale your grips, but it will scale the, the routing. So you might do this if it was gonna be, if you ran your routing and you thought that the, the race was gonna be above 12 knots mainly, because if you put the scale at, let's say 110%, then it's, the routing uh, uses averages, so average wind speeds of all the models you look at. Unless you're looking at a gas map, you're looking at average wind speeds. So it's using those average wind speeds. So you need to, uh, if it's gusty, so that's why I say above 12 knots, uh, is when you're going to begin to see gusts. But if it was a really windy race and, and there was a lot of instability in the air, you might want to scale this so that you, you know, your boat's actually, uh, your routing somewhat reflecting the, um, the gusts, so gusts can be up to 40% higher than the averages, so good thing to remember. Uh, the true wind direction, I wouldn't be fiddling with that unless you thought that the, the you could, you looked at all the observations, you're like, you know what, I'm going to move this, you know, 10 degrees to the left because all of the models are out and I can see on the observations that, um, you know, that the wind's further to the south or, or, or whichever way you, way you thought. Don't, you don't have to play with that. If you want to keep things simple, just don't. Um, but yeah, so we've got our, our polars set up. You can export the polar um, and put it into a spreadsheet if you find that easier to manipulate it and play with it, and then you can import it again. Uh, check it. Don't, yeah, do this now. That's why we're talking about it now, is you want to get into this stuff uh, today. Okay, I said I'd mention the wave polar. Um, because I'm on an advanced uh, polar, 
um, I can, uh, when I had it set on the predefined, it can use those boat dimensions. If I'm not, I need to uh, put my boat dimensions in here. What this does is, uh, there's a, we've actually got a new interface for this, which will better explain what it does, but it's really, really clever. Um, it's actually creating a, a hydrodynamic model of your boat. And when the weather routing is calculating your route, let's say you're beating into some pretty nasty waves, it actually is gonna adjust your polar because it knows you'll be going slower smashing into those waves. Um, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully it's all uh, downwind sailing, you know, at sort of 110, 135 true wind angle and we won't need to worry about that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's um, using uh, the, the wind wave primary, secondary and tertiary uh, swells and waves. Uh, in its calculations, it's very clever. I'll show you the output, some output from that later. Um, it's a new feature, something that we're working on a lot, but um, you know, where I, why, why would that be important? I mean, if it was a rough race and you had this, um, you knew that, that, that the wave state was gonna get really ugly, you might change your safety protocols on board. For instance, if, if you knew that, well, I'll show you the output, but it has vertical acceleration in there um, and roll, and you saw those numbers going up, you might go, hey guys, it's, you know, tonight it's going to get nasty and, you know, nobody goes on deck until they're clipped on, you know, just stuff like that. I don't know, maybe they're, maybe that's your safety protocols anyway, but, you know, whether it's a light race or a windy race and that might be common sense, but just seeing this stuff in the outputs, um, you know, could change the way that you guys uh, run your boat. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, yeah, so just, just well, I won't stop sharing just yet. So we can run our route in here if we want to, <laughs> you know, click on here, it's gonna calculate the route. And, but instead we're gonna go into the offshore app and, and have a look at that, um, stop sharing. And I am going. So now I talked before about the two pieces of uh, software, the predict wind app and website, which is the same, and then the offshore app. So now we're gonna to go to the uh, offshore app. So you'll see the screen looks slightly different, um, but not massively different. So I've been in here and I have um, run the weather routing beforehand, before we started this, this webinar. Uh, the time here is my time on my computer. So for the offshore app, it, it does use the time uh, on your uh, device. So as someone asked before, can I use this on uh, my phone? Yes, you can. The, the, the offshore app is, uh, you can use it on your iPhone and your iPad or your, uh, you know, your Android phone. So your Samsung or whatever one of the 500 different types of Android devices there are, um, or your tablet. Um, but you can also use it on your Mac or your PC computer. So it works on any of those pieces of software. Uh, the cool thing about that is that you can have the software loaded on those devices. Um, you can run your routing on them, you know, beforehand, uh, and then while you're underway, and um, you know, just have that flexibility um, of, uh, you know, of and redundancy of having it on a, you know, a laptop and having it on your iPad or or whatever it is that you choose to do. Um, I'm a big fan of um, of my laptop, my Mac laptop, and and, and an iPad. Um, I know when I'm sailing, I use my iPad a lot, um, you know, because then I can flick uh, over to a, a, a nav a nav um, app if I want to. So <clears throat> I ran this ran this routing before, and um, I just ran it for the, the you know the time that we had uh, at the, at that time. Um, let's not get too far into analysis. We might do a bit more analysis next week. Um, but what I will uh, talk about here is to me, e even without analyzing this, so where do we start here? Where do, when did I run this? I ran this at about 11 o'clock. Um, and you can see here, it's at 11 o'clock. And if I go through to 11 o'clock, you know, 12 hours time, Yes, there was some um, strategic decisions to make there, 
but I didn't need to make a decision about this part. I mean, I probably did. Um, I mean, I would want to look at why the ECMWF wants me to go up here. And all the other models are very similar, especially through here. Um, <clears throat> you know, we might run our routing again once we get to here, but this is when, in fact, around 11 o'clock, the models would have updated at, uh, models will update here. So this would have been the safe decision for me, probably, but on the on the rum line. Um, this, yeah, you would want to really drill into why it wanted you to do this. I mean, this could be a race winning or losing decision um, and, and, and definitely a risky one when we've got five other models all wanting us to do the same thing. And this is where we would move our uh, start waypoint and run our routing again here once we'd got to this part. So this is why we have our satcoms uh, because um, over the Iridium Go, we can then download our new weather routing. Uh, when we download that weather routing, it sees, you know, Nick's here um, and it knows my polars, which we've set up and, you know, where, where I am and any other settings that I want to change, which I have a quick look at in a second. But so we have, and when we do that, that download, it sends that request off, crunches all that data on our servers and it sends it back to you. And so it's using a huge amount of um, data on our servers to calculate those routes, but you don't need to download all of that data um, onto your uh, device because it's all being crunched on the servers. And so it's a, it's a much more efficient way to do it. It, it really levels the playing field uh, to people that have, uh, for people that are, have high-end um, satellite um, connections and um, we're potentially spending a lot of money, you can actually do that for a fraction of the cost by using this system. It's, um, it's pretty cool. So yeah, this is when, when I uh, sail, I would I have all my uh, offshore settings uh, ready to go. And then when I um, come to do a download, uh, there'll be a little white dot on, on the screen here um, of where I am, which will which transfers across from the Iridium Go. If there's not, I can um, I can put my lat long in here manually, and um, and 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 th that will move this start waypoint to where I am, and I can run my new routing. So, what I mentioned before is when I'm uh, you know when I'm racing, I have everything uh, pre pre set all my settings. And so I think um, it's something we will cover next week, but I'll quickly go through it now. So before the race, I've downloaded everything I can. I've downloaded every weather model. I've downloaded every parameter. Um, just basically any piece of information I can get my hands on, I've downloaded it on my, on my web connection. Once I'm underway and I'm on, let's say I'm in the middle of the, of the lake here, um, I've, I've got a much more limited uh, with my connection. And so I'll be on my Iridium Go. And so I have to choose the data I want. And so there's a few ways you can do that. You can get all the models um, and, and then just some of the parameters and you can change your areas. Um, or you could just get, you could get one model and get a, and, and, and maybe try for higher resolution. Depends on where you are in the race, what uh, the weather looks like in front of you. If it's generally windy, well, you, you can be more, more um, you know, more happy with, uh, with perhaps looking at the bigger picture stuff. If it's light or there's a change coming, you know, there's a front moving through or whatever, you, you, you might um, change the way that you download the data and, and, and what you look at. And you might do it several times to get several different things. So I'll show you what I'm talking about there. Click on, I just clicked on this download button over on the left hand side. If you're on an iPad or a, a tablet, it's a, there's a download button on the right. Um, but this, this, all this stuff is essentially uh, the same. It's just got some di slightly different buttons to push. So you'll see here, this is, these are my grubs, and I've downloaded everything. You know, I've got a three hourly time step, I've got the high resolution modeling, all the models, every parameter. I can't download this amount of data on my Iridium Go, um, but I don't need to because the weather router is going to do that. It's going to use 
all of this information. It's going to use everything it can to calculate my route. So I'm only I'm now going to be only be using the GRIBS to visualize what the weather routing is telling me. The weather routing, I have all the tables with that, the data, the, the output from that routing and the tables. But the GRIBS are actually are, are, are actually just here to help me visualize what is in the weather routing. So I can't emphasize enough how powerful the weather routing tool is. And um, it's up to you to interpret what it says to make good decisions for your uh, tactical decisions for your race. So good luck navigators. Um, so the grips, we for our uh, connection, we need to um, we can't get we you know we, we we can't get that time step right at the end of the race. We might get that time step because we might only get you know we might get three hours. We might only get one day of data. Um, so. This is a, 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 you know, that time step in the groups um, and then how many days you get is, is, you know, makes a big difference to your data size. So you see there, it already changed when I went to um, 12 hourly and then I can, I know this isn't a super long race. So I can chop it down, chop the number of days down. You see my, my file, estimated file size is already coming down. Um, we, so, the high resolution data there's I, I sometimes do two downloads and so I might look at at the 50 kilometer resolution and I would get all models but I would um, bump off some of these parameters depending on what I was looking at um, and you know and, and, and look at it that way you'll see there that my um, my file size has is, is, is jumped right down. So this is actually small. We're down in the kilobytes, uh, 82 kilobytes. It's super easy to download on your Iridium Go. Um, so yeah, but something else uh, that I might do, and um, is, Kieran will hate me for saying this, but sometimes you might just get one model and because your weather routing is always going to show you all the models, right? So if they're quite consistent, um, then that's, that's a good thing. Um, but you see here, I have got just the ECMWF and I'm getting the 9K resolution, uh, the high resolution grib there. And because I'm only getting it for a short term, uh, I can I can actually download that over my go. Yeah, it's still pretty big, 214 kilobytes, but I might just wanna look at that in, in, um, you know, in more detail than if, if I was getting the 50 kilometer um, data to look at you know it might be something in particular I want to look at especially at the end of the race you could you know you're, you're down down the uh, uh, you know nearing the top end you might just get one day of data um, and you've got an easily easy download there so yeah there's a, the other thing you can do there is it actually change your um, your grip size so I'll show you what I mean there I just cancelled out of there and I uh, flick to this grip view and you'll see here I've got this white box. I'll zoom out a bit. So this white box is the area of weather I'm downloading, and I can move this around. And so this is, um, let's move, let's pretend we're a bit further up the lake, and I can make this box nice and small. And I can have that like that. And so now when I download, I'm only going to get weather for that for that area, but it's can it's it's changed my file size um, between all the between all the um, you know with with all the models. So I can get ECMWF, I could get UKMO, and it's still pretty small. Um, what you are going to see is if I try and choose the PWG, it doesn't let me get the one day. It's going to give me seven days of data, so it gets pretty big. So I'd be downloading one of those bigger boxes. You can select a 1K area to download if you wanted to, which again could be a, a, a race winning move if you um, near the end of the race. Anyway, so we can select our, um, our models there. We've got our parameters that we can select. Um, you know, if it's, if it's, nasty conditions we might want to see what the the wave looks like if it's not maybe we don't um you know we get the rain so that we can see our fronts uh gusts you know again if it's if it's light winds maybe we don't want to see the gusts but um if it is windy we you know we might that that, that could 
uh, really make a difference in, in our decision making, being able to see that and also being able to see the difference between the wind, which is the averages and the gusts. Uh, can tell us the amount of volatility. And if we saw CAPE with that as well, convective for available potential energy, uh, you know, we, and we've got rain uh, and, you know, big difference between our averages and our gusts, really volatile sort of situation, um, you know, your thunderstorm type activity. So we'll come down here and um, our weather routing settings. So we've got our start time is now. When we're in the race, of course, we want it to be now. Um, if we, uh, you know, a couple of days out, we might start um, putting this state for the race time, you know, even four days out, five days out, uh, because we'll have, you know, a reasonable amount of weather um, to look at. Uh, but, you know, while we're underway, we, we're choosing now. Um, we can, I just clicked on that settings wheel there. You, we can come in here and we can change some of our um, settings. If we weren't happy with our polar, uh, which we discussed before, um, we can come in here and we can adjust the percentage. So it's going to adjust all of the numbers by that percentage. So we can do it uh, for upwind or downwind. Uh, the night setting, that's actually really more a cruiser's setting. You know, uh, if you were going cruising, you might sail at a lower capacity overnight or just want to sail more conservatively. Um, yeah, so we probably don't need to do that. But yeah, if you wanted to adjust your polars, uh, 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 you know, while you're racing, um, go for it. And, you know, here we can put our tack penalties in. You can see my um, uh, polar is set for advanced. And I can also change my, um, my depth avoidance, turn my wave polar on and off, and, um, and my advanced routing adjustments. But uh, make sure you haven't got the motoring settings on. Uh, you don't want that to <laughs> uh, mess with your uh, um, your routing. So I'll just close that. So yeah, that was the weather routing uh, settings here or preferences, as they're called in the um, Predict Wind app. GMDSS, tiny little file. See, so I turn that on and off. Tiny little file. Um, and it will give you the written warnings issued by NOAA. Could be really good to um, information to get during the race. Uh, you know, as, as, as the um, thunderstorms coming to, you know, predicted to come across at some stage, it, you know, that information will be in there. Um, so yeah, good to good to see. You know, especially after the first day when you're actually you've moved past what you might have been, um, you know, had discussed before the race, uh, and you 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 know you can get that. Um, data, which is written by a meteorologist. Observations, uh, yeah, awesome to get them. I mean, you can see the observations, uh, you know, around the the lake and, um, you know, put that up, you know, and, and, and look at the, the groups. Um, something that I would actually be doing now is looking at that all the time, working out if, if, if you aren't familiar with them, uh, you know, looking at what which ones actually give good data. Um, and so you go, okay, that one's actually been matching up with the forecast, you know, all the time. It always looks good. It gives me good data. That could be a sort of a key reference for you. Um, but getting those observations is um, really critical to comparing the observations to, um, I mean, for alerting you as to what's going on, but also comparing it to what the grid files are saying. Uh, you know, does, does that weather model line up with the observations? Just click on next. Uh, we don't have any useful data, uh, ocean data, to provide uh, satellite imagery. I'm not a fan of it, but if you do like it, it is there. Uh, and you'll see here we have our um, YB tracking turned on. So this is where we are going to be able to uh, download the, the boat positions that we looked at before. Um, and we can also have get AIS data. So some people might just choose to look at the AIS data. Um, it's not going to. It's it's not on the weather routing pages yet. Uh, that's a feature that's coming. Uh, but obviously, if you can see uh, everyone on AIS, that's also pretty handy. I'll leave that on for the moment, so, so we can have a look at it. And uh, I'll click on next. And so you'll see here, I've got uh, everything I've chosen to download. Uh, and I can select my connection type. So if we were on our Iridium Go, we would cl click on that tab there. 
and it would uh, connect. You'd need to make sure that you were connected to your um, the Wi-Fi, the, the Iridium Wi-Fi on your device. Obviously, I can't do that because I would cut you all off today. Um, but yeah, so we'll go back to the web connection. But this is the stuff that you need to be practicing. How does this all work? You know, what what, what does what happens? How long does it take? You know, to connect and download and uh, iron all this stuff out. So when it comes to the race, you're a pro at it, and it's all going to work as you expect. See here, I'm really happy with my um, with my file sizes, um, and I'm going to download all that data now. So what you'll notice here is that the weather route will send off. That has um, sent uh, that weather routing request off to the Predict Wind servers. And the Predict Wind servers are calculating that. It's like Nick is here, you know, it's got my lat long and, and, and any polar changes that I made. And it's going to calculate uh, my optimal weather route um, based on that information. And then now it's uh, sent that back to the computer and it has decoded and downloaded all that information. I've got my ECMWF grib that I got, um, I've got my GMDSS, my observations, uh, the GPS tracking, the YB tracking and my AIS data. Don't have to get, you know, you can uh, change all of these things as you wish, but as I said before, I will have um, all of my stuff set up, what I want to download, so I'm not, I'm not I'm not, you know, 12 hours into the race mucking around trying to work out what settings I want here or get my file sizes right. I know what I'm doing. I know how it's set up and I can uh, use the data to make good decisions. So I'll just click on close there. So this comes straight into uh, the uh, weather routing um, tables. And you'll see here I've got a bunch of different tabs that I can look at. Um, I just want to have a look at this graph one, um, just it's usually where I like to start, is, you know, I can see the difference between the models. So this is the route run for my boat across all the weather models. And you can see that the trends are not miles out, you know. Yet it, there's some difference here, but the reality is the trend lines are not miles out. The wind direction trends are not miles out. Um, and then, you know, we've got the rain here, we've got a bit of cape. Um, so all things that we can look at later, increasing pressure. We've got our wave height. It's not super, um, super high, but, you know, what's our wave period? It's, um, you know, it gets pretty short, but it gets short. Yeah, I mean, it gets shorter and, um, and still bigger. Uh, so this is what I was talking about before with my wave polars. So this is the roll. So as I go uh, along the route, you can see uh, up here where our um, the wave height, it's not, yeah, it's 0.7, so it's not massive, um, but the wave period goes down and the boat, uh, you know, we've got quite a bit of roll. Um, we've got, and we've got vertical acceleration. So these are not high numbers, but, it does, it is indicating that, you know, that we are going to get pitched around a bit. Uh, I think the roll uh, gets nasty at about four uh, degrees. And it, that's not actually your boat just rolling four degrees, by the way. Um, it's just a measure. And and the vertical acceleration, I think that gets, that needs to go quite a bit higher to get uh, nasty in that. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. Um, but it's a great thing to know that, that, that you're going to get in the route. Like, let's, if these numbers were a lot higher, gets, as, as I said before, we might change our safety protocols or, or initiate a pre-planned safety protocol that we have. Um, and boat slamming. So you can see that that's nothing. Uh, that needs to get to about 50% uh, before you should be worried. Um, but the boat slamming stuff is, if you see that, uh, think about how you want to manage that stuff it's it's it, it, yeah can it can be that's a really good indicator okay so we have um these are all our our weather routing outputs so coming back to your polars uh you know the true wind speed uh and the true wind angle and the speed over ground uh, you know, that looks pretty, pretty reasonable to me, but yeah, to spend some time looking through these weather routing outputs 
and understanding how they work for your boat. You know, even your average speeds, does, does this sound realistic? Obviously, you need to look at the, um, the wind speeds for the race to, to be able to, um, you know, to make sure that the average speeds aren't thrown off by that. Um, but, you know, we can see that in our summary, you know, what was the max speed? What's the average wind speed, minimum wind speed? You know, get some feelings. I mean, you know, if you've never done a race where your boat averaged, you know, a certain speed, you know, not eight knots, then you, you must have, uh, you might you might want to look at your polars. Uh, and we can look at our wave data. Uh, so the PWE and the PWG do not have wave data for the Great Lakes. Uh, so you're using, it's the ECMWF wave data, uh, which is lucky because it's awesome. And um, yeah, so it, that's why you don't see anything in the PWG and the PWE. Uh, our atmospheric stuff, you know, we've got our pressure and our cape levels they're not super high but if the you know we have uh this and there's some of these models have rain with them in the cape so something we might want to think about i need to move my zoom controls so we ran that uh we ran our route for the last part of that race uh just looking at the wind direction um i can see why they're all pretty lined up there um, but we can, down the bottom right here, we can look at the different models and we can see why. So I was, I looked at that and I instantly thought, well, gee, there's, um, you know, five models where the models all say to just basically follow the rum line through here. Um, but the PWE has um, taken a pretty bold move there and wants me to go outside. And so I just instantly wanted to have a look at why. And um it's trying to avoid this, this light wind that it thinks is going to be in here. So yeah, interesting thing to think about. Um, you can see that that, that model uh, thinks it's going to be a lot slower, uh, but you can also see why that model wants to route you uh, outside of here uh, rather than through the inside where uh, the wind gets uh, down to five knots, whereas up here, uh, you know, we've got seven, eight knots. Um, we'll do a lot more looking at routes and stuff next week, um, but it will be, yeah, we will be uh, really just looking at the tools. So the interesting thing here is that I am actually uh, looking at a high resolution grib here. Um, so this is a 1K grib, and so it's actually covering a lot of detail uh, as to what's happening. You can see the wind shadow coming off the island here uh, and stuff like that. So really good to look at and think about for your race strategy uh you know if if, if we uh, you know wind shadows uh, off land and land effects um yes we can think about them but we sometimes seeing it visually is is a really nice thing to see um looks like we've actually gone on for quite a long time so i'll stop talking um i'll stop sharing and I will hope that Kieran will come back and talk to me. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, yeah, there's a couple of questions which I thought would be better answered um, by you for everybody. Um, one of them was, um, can you show us again where to choose the MAC race for Yellow Brick? So just yep. maybe in the forecast website and then in the offshore app. So, so you want to, um, how to set to where to get yeah, it. Yeah, how to choose, um, yep. I guess, how to set up so that you've got the MAC race selected for Yellow Brick, where you can see it in the forecast website and where you can see it in the offshore app. <clears throat> okay, so I've just shared my screen again and come back. So I'll just go to, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got everything collapsed. Um, so I'm in the I'm in I'm in the forecast.predictwind.com, uh, which was what we call our forecast website. Um, and so you can come in here and you can look, you know, this is I would be in here a lot um because I can um sit at work and um run weather routing all day and look at weather models and um you know all sorts of different things. Um and uh, and I can come in here and yeah, so I'll close 
see we've got this menu down the left here and I can come to tools and we've got our weather routing, departure planning, GPS tracking, and here we have YB events. Um, so I click on YB events and I'm so I'm now in that tab and I come up here and you can I can see the race I've already got selected. I can come up here and I can select race, click in there and I can click on the Chicago Mac. And that's it. It's now logged in my account. Um, so then I will, you know, and then I could go back to the weather routing and run a weather route or, or do whatever. So I'll stop sharing that. Um, the other one, I just need to move that as I will share the screen again and go into the Prickwind offshore app. So now I'm in the offshore app. Um, and where I selected that was in my download settings. So when I click on download and um, go on, it's on the second page. Oops, we're done. Sorry, click on download. And here we, it's on the second page of my download settings. And see here, I have got YB. I can turn it on and off. And it's as simple as that. It's turning on and off in there. So if you have that on, you will download the boat positions. Now I just click on next, and then I can download it. So see there, I could actually just download that all by itself if I wanted to. I could just click on that little arrow. So, um, what oh, we don't to... stop sharing because um, there's a few other questions as well that need to be addressed in there. Okay, like? Um, adding waypoints or yep. intermediate waypoints and getting rid of them again and how that functionality works. Cool. So waypoints, um, this is the waypoints icon here. Um, I'll just move my zoom controls. So uh, as I mentioned before, we can move our um, our little uh, we could move our little start waypoint and, and it would change the lat long here or we could um, put them in. If I want to add more waypoints, there's a plus button here. And so I can click plus plus and I will have um, some waypoints added. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So you'll see there, I have, I've got uh, waypoints that I can move around the map um, and I can add them to the course if I wanted to. Um, if I click on minus, they disappear off. I wouldn't try uh, using them unless you really have to. Um, and I will show you why. I'll just close that, that box there is I would prefer, if I was going to do this, this is just me, but um, I've used this software a lot, uh, is to add a boundary. So see this uh, funny little icon here? If I click on that, I can add a boundary. So I don't know, let's, let's say I, for, I strategically decided I did not want to go through this gap because I felt that the, the winds were going to get light through there or I just know that that always happens. I can click on the map after clicking on that button and I can create a boundary here. And so you'll see I clicked uh, four times on the map there and then I, I completed the shape. So you have to go back and complete the shape and it goes uh, this um, you know, darkened color. And so the router will not go through this area now. It will avoid it. So if I ran my weather routing now, they would all go around the north side of this island. So, and I can click on that button again, which just turns uh, that function off. And so it's there. And then if I click on it again, click in the middle, I can delete that boundary. Am I sure? Yes. So yeah, I would, that would be my preference over the waypoints just because I like the functionality of it. Um, so yeah, is that that one, yeah. Kieran? 
Yeah, and it, and it doesn't matter that your yellow line between your start and finish crosses land. Our system has land or depth avoidance built into it. So you don't have to have waypoints around headlands and things. Our system will do it for you. Yeah, and so, yeah, again, you know, um, I would use that depth avoidance contour um, yeah. or put the boundaries in. If you don't want to get too close to particular pieces of land, just use the boundaries. I, I yeah, that's a much nicer way to do it. Um, in my opinion. Yeah, cool. Um, one more, can we? Can you go through swapping between high res and low res in the offshore app? Because in maybe hiding the um, the routes? Perhaps? Yep. So I'll hide and show routes. Uh, if I don't want to see some routes, I can click on this hide show button here and I can hide particular routes um, just to sort of keep things more simple, and I can just turn them back on. Um, if I come up here into Grib, so I need to be in Grib to swap between the high res boxes. If I click on uh, the particular box, I will flick between those high res boxes. So these high res boxes relate to the uh, predict wind, PWG and PWE, um, but these high resolution boxes could be very, very handy. <laughs> um, I think the question was also like last year, we, the user interface switching between high res and low res was problematic. So that's why we've changed it now and made that grib section and the preferences, and sorry, in the main menu only for grib. So it's easier now to switch between high and low res. Yeah. Yeah, and then if I was in weather routing, as my, and I'm in the PWG model there, it will automatically switch between those high res and, and, and um, so the 1K and the 8K res boxes, just so you know what's happening there. If it's got a small box like this, it's high res. Um, and if I scroll back, I'm in the eight kilometer resolution um, box there. Cool. Um, depth avoidance seems to imply that there's some chart data underlying the route to avoid, avoid reefs and shoals. Is that the case? That is the case. So it is using um, chart data from CMAP, uh, who are a, a very well-known um, charting company. And so that, that, that data is in there. This is not a navigation tool. This is a weather tool. It's to make the weather routes more realistic um, and, 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 you know, more valuable. Uh, you know, if, if a route was uh, taking you through an area where you couldn't actually sail, well, then that, that route's invalid. You know, another way to do that would be to, to, to again, use your boundaries. Um, but yes, there is chart data in there. So it's using contour, uh, CMAP chart contours. Yeah, cool. And sort of along that line, someone says, we've noticed that Gray's Reef is not on the map and it's required we go through it without adding a waypoint. Would boundaries be the best? So would you put boundaries either side of, I don't know where Gray's Reef is, but if you put boundaries either side of it, it will steer yeah. you through it, right? Yeah, yeah. You just need to make sure that uh, your boundary, um, you know, is, you yeah, make sure it doesn't do something crazy when, you know, you might need to lock it off on the land. Uh, with your boundary um yeah i'm not sure where that is either sorry i thought you'd done yeah. the race Karen. yeah <laughs> i did it up the other way um oh that's right um well, one more if you do not have the iridium go and want to experiment with predict wind and weather routing for a mac computer using web or cell data should you download the predict wind app or the offshore app both yeah i had I mean, another person ask sorry okay yeah, well, it's pretty easy to, to get started in the Predict Wind app, I guess, you know, because then you're not, you're, not, you're not dealing with grips. Um, but if you're going to use it and you don't have, you know, you don't, you don't have to have a SAT connection to use this. You could, I, I mean, if I didn't, um, I would be, you know, I would be using the offshore app still and I'd be downloading everything before I started. And then if there were areas of the lake I knew I was going to get cell connection, then I would be updating my routing at those times um, and using the offshore app. But you have to use the offshore app because it saves everything offline. Mm. So, 
and will it sync between will it sync routes and settings between a PC and your iPhone iPad? Yes. Yeah. You might want to explain that one further, Karen. Yeah. Oh, now we're online. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> I just think we're getting. Um, we've run over time. If anyone wants to ask any other questions, maybe they come into support because that that syncing one is. Yeah, they do sync between the Predict Wind app and the Offshore app. Um, so whatever you set in one will be followed on into the other one. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I mean it's it is quite an important point that so that you know we, at the start when I did the um, when I changed my polars, um, if I uh, I just need to make sure my Offshore app is closed and then when it opens, uh, it will sync that data across. It will do a check. Is that I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it yep. works. And if you're yep. offline in the offshore app with the Iridium Go, it won't sync until you you download that route. So if you make changes in the offshore app, like you um, put motoring on or, or turn on ocean your data or, percentage something, or something, yeah, then it will sync over and back into the PredictWind app or PredictWind website after that route's been run. Cool. Um, so they sort of sync. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not an easy one to answer. Um, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, that, uh, yeah. If, if you if you do a bunch of stuff in the Predict Wind app, um, and then you open up the Offshore app, it will sync. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I think that's all of them. Right. There was lots of really good questions and lots of them coming in at the end, so I thought it was easier just to get you to answer some of them. Cool. Am I allowed to go back to being on holiday now? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Maybe. In. Maybe, yeah. It, uh, it, it, thank you, Nick and Karen, very much. Uh, there's one question that, that came up several times about polars and polar format, uh, yeah. where uh, I think you answered one question saying that if you can get us the data in a .txt format or one other format, I forget which kind, that you can create a polar and uh, people seemed interested in that. Do you know how they can get uh, polar files in that format from the ORC office or not? Karen? <laughs> not easily. Um, most of the polars that are online like that are just a PDF file that you would then put into your NAV software. We need our developers need it in either a .txt file or a .pol, which is a polar file, not so common. But if you can get it to us in a .txt or even in an Excel spreadsheet, then we can manipulate it. But it takes quite a while to transpose data from like a PDF um, graph over into a file that we can then use. So our development yeah, we just need the text, the text, the text format, not the not the graph format. Yeah. which is you know it, basically any software needs the text format yeah okay, okay. great yeah. thank you uh, 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 as you said a lot of great questions and we appreciate you uh taking the time to answer all of them and you know, taking time from your holiday uh the final session will be next monday night at 1900 hours central time uh and uh, we look forward to seeing you all then there will be a separate sign up link for that. So please sign up for this. We'll get uh, uh, this webinar up on the website uh, in the next couple of days. It'll be, I would look at the uh, Chicago uh, Mac website, YouTube channel first. Okay, thank you all. Thank, thank you very you. much for having us. Yep. See ya. See ya. Bye.